Let's look at some derivatives of logarithmic functions and exponential functions. I've written over here, if y is equal to e to the x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is also e to the x. e to the x is the only function that's its own derivative. If y is equal to the natural logarithm of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is 1 over x. So this number e, it's a naturally occurring constant. It's like pi. It's one of those numbers that just shows up in the mathematical descriptions of things around us. So you know in a circle that the ratio of the circumference to the diameter is always pi. That's just the way things are in the universe. The ratio of the circumference to the diameter in any circle is pi. Pi is a naturally occurring constant. It also happens to be an irrational number, so we can't write it as a fraction or a decimal. But that's okay. It's still a nice constant that works very well for us. The number e, you don't see it too much until you go a little bit further in mathematics and uh, say do some work with statistics. But that standard normal distribution that we use to describe statistically things that uh, around us, for instance, if you went to your school and you took the height of all the students in your school and then plotted them on a coordinate system, you would see that they would fall into a shape that looks like this. Well, all those shapes like that, all those normal distributions can be standardized into what's called the standard normal distribution. And the equation that describes that graph is y equals 1 over square root 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2. So that e, it's a naturally occurring constant. Like pi, it's an irrational number, and it just shows up in the world around us. Okay, let's go back and look at some derivatives here for a second. I want to differentiate y equal x times e to the x, so I have the product of two things right here, so I'm going to have to use my product rule. y prime is going to be the first, x, times the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so e to the x plus the second, e to the x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. Okay, so let's see, maybe I'll just factor in e to the x out of both terms there, and I'll have e to the x times x plus 1. So there's the derivative of the function y equal x e to the x using this formula right here for the derivative of e to the x. Whoops, before I go any further, I forgot to uh, close this little parenthesis right here. So e to the x times the quantity x plus 1. All right g of x is equal to 25x squared over e to the x. I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So let's see, g prime of x will be equal to, okay, the denominator, e to the x, times the derivative of the numerator, okay, the derivative of 25x squared, 50x, minus the top, 25x squared. I'm going to have to make a little room right here. 25x squared, that's the top, times the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I'll put that in. e to the x all divided by the denominator squared, and e to the x quantity squared is the same as e to the 2x. All right, so let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try to factor what I can out of the numerator here. I can factor out a 25. I can factor out an x and I can factor out e to the x. So let's try that. 25 x e to the x. What's left in this term is 2, and what's left in this term is, that's x squared, so I factor one of those x's out, so I have left an x, and that's all over e to the 2x, and then e to the x over e to the 2x, that's just going to be e to the x in the denominator, so I'll divide out that common factor. 25x times 2 minus x, make sure I close the parentheses this time, over, okay, this is about to run off the board, let me write it and then I'll adjust it, over e to the x. Okay, so you can see it now here, right, e to the x. Okay, so we got that. All right, for problem number three, I have y equals log x over x. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit all this on, so let's just see what we get right here. Okay, so the derivative, y prime. I'm going to use the quotient rule again. This time I have a logarithm in the numerator and x in the denominator. So denominator is x, derivative of the numerator, 1 over x, minus, okay, I'm going to have to erase this. Let's just kind of get that out of there. Okay, minus the, whoops, minus the numerator, log x, 
times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, all divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so I have x times 1 over x minus log x over x squared. So uh, let's see. This is going to be 1 minus log x over x squared. Okay, so 1 minus x over x squared, that's okay. I don't think I have enough room right here, so let me go to another board and I'll write this problem down again. Okay, here's our problem 4. I've written it down again. y equals square root x log x. Okay, I'm going to use the product rule for this. I have an algebraic function, square root x times a logarithmic function. I think what I'm going to do is start by writing this as y equal x to the one-half power natural log x. That way I can see I have an exponent on that variable right there. might make things a little bit easier. Okay, the derivative of y with respect to x, when I differentiate now, I'm going to take my first function, x to the one-half, times the derivative of my second function, and the derivative of log x is 1 over x, plus the second function, log x, times the derivative of the first function. Okay, I'm going to differentiate x to the one-half. That's going to be one-half x to the one-half minus one, which is negative one-half. All right, so what do we have here? x to the one-half divided by x to the one, x to the one-half divided by x to the one, x to the negative one-half, plus one-half natural log x times x to the negative one-half. Okay, let's see. How about if I do this? I'll multiply this by two over two. So I have a two for a denominator for both of these terms right here. And I'll take the x to the one-half that's in the numerator and write it as 1 over x to the positive one-half. See if this makes sense. 2 plus log x all divided by 2 x to the one-half, which uh, I, I'll write back here as square root x. So 2 plus log x over 2 square root x. x to the negative one-half is 1 over x to the one-half, which is the same as the square root of x. So there's a look at some uh, derivatives of logarithmic functions and exponential functions.